ongoing projects here. So what we're doing is we've been we've been pulling these these little nylon um, raw water screens out and making sure they're fully clean. We we discovered we discovered that uh, on the generator that it was almost entirely blocked, impossible to um, push water or actually suck water in, and that was that resulted in one of our um, impeller blades on the raw water pump um, exploding, and coming apart. So I've dug down into this into this gen set to try to get. Um, I've got a new impeller. I've I've gotten you know I've got new sealant on this, and we're um, we're waiting on belts. Uh, if somebody had had twisted this, unbolted the bolts, and twisted this lifting bracket, which is also the bracket for the pump, in order to use a smaller belt. But it meant that the that the the pulley was pulleys were misaligned. So when when I put the alignment back. Um, it, it ended up being that the that the belts that we had didn't fit anymore. So since we're here in Gibraltar where parts are easy and relatively inexpensive to get, we're getting all this stuff taken care of. Um, down in here we've taken the opportunity to clean all three raw water strainers um, for the for the main engine, the gen set, and the refrigeration refrigeration system since you know we're already in there. We've also uh, relabeled some of these diverter valves. And it, this is really something to know. Um, normally in home plumbing and stuff, this lever being going to that direction uh, would say that this was going to C. But in actuality, it's out to tank is the flow direction. And you really have to be careful with what, what the valves themselves say. Um, in the case of this, the previous owner had these, these, two, um, these, these, these two labels, these two um, signs the zip tied onto the hoses reversed so that this would point to tank and if, it, if you went the other way it would point to C but it was wrong that those hoses didn't go there they were that 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 helped you understand what the what the valve uh, orientation was but it was inaccurate and we fought this for for oh gosh I don't know how long how long did we six months we've been six months we've been fighting every time with, we open this up we we yeah, go the wrong way we find our we find our gray water tank is full and we can't figure out why and it's because it's actually turned the wrong direction so um and obviously the same thing could and do, did happen with our black water tanks as well so we're taking the opportunity to get all of this stuff fixed and done properly uh, so that, and, and I even put a little um, electro tag sign on this pipe, saying, telling people how to how to how to make sure they understand it, um, because it's 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 confusing. Now that I put the belt and the and the and the and the pump back on, and started it up last night, I find it just blowing water out of the seal. So the seal is bad, and that's probably the result of it never really having proper water pressure in there before, and therefore it wasn't really, really. Um, uh, it, it, it was sealing at the lower pressure, but now at the higher pressure, it's not anymore. Uh, there, were, there was some question in my mind as to whether it had actually broken the housing. And um, the, 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 you know, when, when you've got a crack in a in a metal casting, it's 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 very very difficult sometimes to see. And so, but we have the, the replacement seal as part of a of a repair pack that 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 I have for this pump. This is a Johnson um, pump impeller raw water pump and I'm going to pop the seal off the back of that I mean it makes sense to just attack the problem uh, small small pieces at a time and see so I'll replace the pump seal and if it still leaks if there's still a problem then we'll we'll come back to that later on so here's our here's our little seal and now we have to watch about catching o-rings down in here because they have a, a slinger o-ring in there that you don't you don't want to you don't want to damage because you can't replace it easily. Um, but then we're just going to pry this out with a screwdriver. All right, so I was able to to, to pop that that seal out from the back using this little tool that is actually made for for paint, uh, opening paint cans, and I was able to push it out. It wasn't very hard to push out at all, the, and I uh, I used um, some pure silicon grease um, as a lubricant. Um, for, for lip seals, you, you always want to lubricate them somehow, and uh, I've been told that the pure silicon works well with these pumps. Uh, and so we're, um, we did that. I've used RTV sealant on here. The paper gaskets we found are, are 
suspect. They kind of just don't really seem to work. A lot of times they come in the packaging all folded in half and they've got creases in them and then when you install them they find you find out that they they just don't seal so I'm, I'm giving this a shot uh, it's worked in the past for me um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that and the worst that happens is it has to be torn apart again I'm trying to get this this generator running reliable it's a Fisher Panda 6 kVA generator it's a pretty high-end unit really um, although it's a little bit old um, at this point uh, but really has almost no engine hours on it and in fact the engine itself is new uh, was replaced by the previous owner um, so what's been happening with it is when we got the boat it would run reliably for two hours three hours however long it took to recharge the batteries and that was all well and good however over time it started shutting itself down and we're almost positive that's because of of a heat temperature uh, sensor up here on the top um, that that indicates um, that the that the unit is running hot and not getting enough cooling it's not wired properly we found out at the panel uh, because the way the lights light up there's there's actually two of these there's a there's a, a temperature sensor on the exhaust manifold and there's another one on the head and it's the we think it's the one on the head that's that's tripping uh, but I'm in the process of trying to debug the problem. We've, we, we were unable to su suction uh, water in through the raw water intake, chase that down to the, uh, the raw water strainer, which is made of nylon, and that had crystalline salts caked onto it, and we were able to break those off and soak those strainers in, in, um, in, in vinegar to make that um, clear that was giving us good supply of water in through here. We also had a plastic elbow on the bottom that had the wrong pipe threads for this pump and that's where all this dripping uh, scale is from. This block <clears throat> looks like a heat sink but in reality it gets water flow, raw water, um, sea water, salt water in and runs all the way around the stator and back out the other side where it comes out this bottom. And this is a weak link on this particular generator. They've changed the design subsequently. They don't do it this way. So one of the things I'm going to be doing in the next couple of days is running an anti-scaling compound through the entire system. However, in the meantime, this generator, even with a new belt and all the pump cleaned up and a new impeller, is running for about 10 minutes before it shuts itself down. I mean, basically about enough time for it to warm up. And something's not right. And so the first, the first thing I'm going to address right now is I'm going to replace the impeller again because I'm pretty sure that the impeller, the Perkins impeller that was supplied to us by that Perkins dealer um, is, is, is not the right kind of impeller for this. The, the veins are not nearly as strong as the original Johnson part. So I've gone and dug around Gibraltar, um, chased down an original Johnson pumps uh, impeller that's the right one for this application and I'm gonna do that right now I'm gonna take this plate off for probably the fifth time uh, and change do an impeller change I've already changed the seal in there um, and we've cleaned up this pump in vinegar to try to make sure that it, it's you know it just just looking nice and has all the corrosion off of it as much as possible so here goes on that one try to catch as much water as I can here but uh, it's probably a losing losing deal oh. there it is yeah there we go good amount of good amount of water in there As you can see, these two these two impellers look the same, but the the flexibility of these veins on the Perkins one versus the flexibility on the on the original Johnson one, it's a material difference. And I'm using about the same pressure on each one, and you can you can really see what the difference is. So I'm hoping that the pro that one of the problems with this pump is it's just not developing enough psi 
for the for the for the situation that we have um, for it to, to, to be operated under. I, I figure that can't hurt. It's a you know twenty dollar impeller or something. I don't even know how much it was. I'm putting I'm putting some uh, silicon grease on it now. You you really want to lubricate these things as much as possible. It turns out, looking in the Yanmar or the uh, Jabsco catalog, that they make both nitrile and neoprene impeller blades, and you have to use the right one for the right application. The neoprene ones appear to be the ones that, I, I'm going from memory, but uh, there's one for bilge pumps and one for engine cooling. and the um the neoprene ones i believe are the ones for for uh um for engine cooling and I, I think that's the big difference in the flexibility of these two items um they you know they fit obviously but it's 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 not really working so let's try this let's see how we do um, yeah already it doesn't really doesn't want to go in. That's a good sign. You don't have to worry which way the veins go because when you um, when you turn the when the when the when the when the pump turns it'll flip them around the right way. So there's really no no concerns there. Uh, I am going to use some rubbing alcohol to clean up the, the gasket surface. Could use contact cleaner or something else, but I think I'm just gonna stick stick with this. I, I, I've just put grease on this impeller, and a real good possibility that it gets on these surfaces. Okay. Okay. So here's what our here's what our gasket material looks like. I'm gonna try to make sure I get this back in the way that it went before, but it doesn't really matter. There's no there's no hole that's different than the rest or anything like that. Little nuts and bolts like this guy at the marine maintenance facility was telling me that they uh, had an oyster come in that kept having the the um, valve rods. And tappets come out of out of out of alignment and out of adjustment, and they finally ended up having to pull the whole engine and found out that there was a screw, a, a nut, or a bolt. I'm not sure which that was down inside uh, the engine that was not part of the engine. Somebody dropped it in through the oil filler cap, most likely, and it kind of worked its way down through the engine, doing damage along the way. And you know the person who dropped that in there probably saw it go in, and they just they just knew that they couldn't even say anything, or else, you know, it's going to be no end to the problems that, that came after that, professionally and everything else, and money-wise. So they just kind of let it go and hoped for the best, and they got away with it, um, really, because at the end of it all. A couple of years later, nobody can prove anything. You wouldn't have even been able to prove it ten minutes later. Um, so it, it was uh, it's the way things work in the trades. If you're not supervising every last second of something, you just <laughs> really two ways you can do types of sealants. You can you can either try to tighten it up firmly on the first try um, while it's still while it's still wet and the other one is to get it hand tight and leave it sit for 15 or 20 minutes and then tighten it the rest of the way. I've had good luck with this particular sealant just tightening it up right from the get-go. We're using a star pattern like we did with lug nuts on the car tire. Now the one thing you do want to do is give it the right amount of time to dry. This stuff does take a while to dry. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really not do anything with this till tomorrow. It gets tacky in about 
15 minutes or so. Okay, so now I want to I want to definitely rotate this this engine a little bit. And the reason is because we have sealant squished out like that on the inside as well. I want to make sure I spin those impeller blades around to get those those little bits at least squeegeed around so that they don't um, they don't stick out proud. Obviously, the the the, the impeller is is strong enough and running at a high enough speed that it'll just rip all that stuff out and send it on down the line. But we prefer not to have big chunks of silicon running through the system if we can avoid it. I'm sure somebody will notice that this cover does not fit exactly right and we suspect that the reason is because the previous owner had replaced the engine on this generator and we don't believe that the new engine was exactly the same as the old engine. We have a whole bunch of of, of Fisher Panda belts that don't fit this engine. They don't seem to fit anything. And, uh, and we think that that's because the old engine required a different set of belts. And as a result, the, the whole housing, the, the sound shield kind of is shifted to one side. But, you know, it works. Um, it does its job, keeps the sound uh, at a low level. And, you know, we just have to live with it. There's not much we can do about that. This hose kind of as a stethoscope I was able to hear the water running down inside the cockpit drain um, it's not very loud it's not something that you can easily hear um, but then I may adjust it so that more water goes in uh, so that you can hear it uh, but at the moment um, it's doing what it's supposed to do which is focusing most of the water onto the cooling system That's what we want to. That's what we want to see. And then back here, we started at about 9 a.m. Started about five, six minutes ago. Should be warming up fairly soon. But what we want to see is no steam coming out of the exhaust. Yeah, that'll be an indication that we're getting proper cooling. So the, the genset issues uh, are, are finally solved. You know, we've, we've, uh, we, we've, we've, we've been wrong, I've been wrong on pretty much every item that I've addressed. It, it, had, it took a long time to get to the root cause of this, uh, which, which turned out to be a blockage in the, in the cooling system. Uh, this was solved eventually by sucking anti-scaling solution which in this case was we used white vinegar uh, about uh, I'd say about uh, a gallon and a half of it we, we sucked in using the using the, uh, the the raw water pump I, I pushed that through left it sit for six hours on the advice of the Fisher Panda guys and it took a long time to suck that two gallons or gallon and a half of vinegar into it it just didn't seem to want to pull it very fast but after the six hours, I started it back up again with water in the in the empty containers, and it it it, it sucked kind of hard for a second, and then all of a sudden it just it just drained the entire container down. So clearly, it had loosened something up and and, and pa passed it through. So that turned out to be the real issue with the cooling. Um, we we addressed the problem sequentially, starting with the easiest things to do and moving forward. Uh, and and it, it it worked, you know that 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 was the thing, and we really did need this generator to be running. And I think that you know I've succeeded, or probably other people have failed on it because I think other people have been. I, I know that Ian and and some of the guys at West Coast Marine have, have 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 had a hand on this generator in the past. I don't know that they looked at it too closely. But that, 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 that it's not been running exactly right for a while. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that 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 I did was I put this valve into the anti-siphon loop, this brass bronze valve, I don't know which, um, which, which helps neck down the anti-siphon. Um, in, in marine engines and gen generators, you have an anti-siphon loop on the, 
on the cooling system. And what this does is it introduces air up at the top of that, that little, that little um, turn in the blue plastic. And what, it, what, it, what that does is it, it means that when you stop the engine, that air allows the, the water to come back down and it won't continue to siphon through. Um, it was running so much water into there that I was suspecting that it was, it was reducing the, the water pressure within the cooling system. And I, I think that, that, that this definitely helped um, cut down on the amount of water going into the cockpit drain out of the, from the siphon loop uh, while the engine is being run. And um, so the, the danger here, though, is that somebody could shut this off. And I've been meaning to put like a tag or something on there to say, don't do that. If you shut that off and remove the siphon loop, what will happen is water will siphon back into the exhaust manifold and into the, um, into the mixing elbow and fill up uh, the area um, along the exhaust uh, manifold and eventually find its way into the cylinders. And if you're trying to start the engine when... When, that, when, when water is in there like that, it'll hydro lock and, and, and break pistons or bend connecting rods and ruin the engine, just, in, just a big you know, explosion. And you really don't want to do that. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that a lot of um, people don't understand is if you're trying to start uh, an engine or a gen set and it's not starting and you just keep cranking it, you will fill up the exhaust system with water and then the water will back into the, into the uh, exhaust uh, manifold also and that's probably the, the, the single most common way of destroying a marine diesel engine is by having that happen so so be, just be aware on that so I'm sh shooting this piece of video literally months after the generator repair and I just wanted to show you the importance of it you know here here we are in Keone Greece along the town key and it's an absolutely gorgeous place to be sure but they don't they don't have any electric pedestals at all and so we're running our generator to the t today for two hours two 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 and a half hours to keep our refrigeration up uh, the batteries are charged there's no problems there but it does charge the battery and it runs our water heater as well um, and so that's the importance of having a gen set. Uh, it, it's without it, we wouldn't be able to have food on the boat or cold beer. Uh, so it's, it's, it's very worthwhile. And a lot of the smaller boats don't, don't have generators, and so therefore the people just eat out. Um, but that gets expensive after, after a while. Um, but anyway, that's, we're very, very happy that the generator's working, working great, and, and um, we haven't had any troubles with it.